Thank you for watching today's message from St. Matthew's Lutheran Church in Stoddard. Our message today is... Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Here again the words of our gospel lesson from Luke chapter 4 verses 1 through 13. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days and at the end of them he was hungry. The devil said to him, if you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor. It has been given to me and I can give it to anyone I want to. If you worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished all his tempting, he left him until an opportune time. This is God's word. You may be seated. Dear worshipers of the righteous one, while this section of scripture may not be at the top of your list of the most well-known stories in the Bible. It is one of the most important events from Jesus' entire ministry. This section of scripture, what Jesus did there in the wilderness, fighting the devil and his temptations, ranks right up there with Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection on Easter Sunday. Now those events are probably more well known. Those events are what we're we're getting to, what we're leading to. Those events we celebrate on high festival days like Good Friday and Easter Sunday. Those events mark the end of our Lenten season and our, our following of the Savior to the cross. But here, in this lesson, we go actually back to the beginning of Jesus' ministry to something that started it all off as we see this account of Jesus fighting against the temptations of the devil. He just left the Jordan River, we heard about, was him leaving from when he was baptized. This begins his ministry and his work of saving our souls and giving us eternal life. Not only, though, do these verses tell us about or a part of God's plan of salvation for us, they're also very instructional for us too. They teach us how we should fight off the devil and his temptations whenever he comes after us. And on top of that, on top of being part of God's plan of salvation, showing us how we should fight against the devil, it also, this is a very comforting section of scripture because it reminds us that our Savior personally understands what it's like to be tempted by the devil. He experienced it and won the victory. He showed his power over the devil in every temptation. He defeated our wicked foe. So you and I, we follow the true champion. And as we follow him, we know that we're going to face attacks by the devil, our great enemy. But following his This champion also, we stand on the firm truth and the power of God's word and trust in our champion for forgiveness. Of course, these three temptations that we hear about written for us in Luke's gospel aren't the only temptations that Jesus ever faced. He says the devil was there tempting him for 40 days out in the wilderness. We just have three of those temptations recorded for us. And, of course, Jesus was tempted, as any human being is, 
all throughout his life and ministry, 33 years that he lived on this earth. One time, the Bible tells us about a time when the devil tried to tempt him away from carrying out God's plan of salvation with Peter's words. Peter rebuked Jesus for saying that he would be going to the cross. Certainly the devil was tempting Jesus by sending the opposition against him from his own Jewish people. Think about his own people of Nazareth who rejected him. And of course, Jesus being a human being felt the, the pain and the concern knowing what he was going to have to face, not only the pain of crucifixion and the flogging and the mocking, but the rejection from his heavenly father. Of course, those things were tempting from the devil for Jesus to not complete the plan of salvation that God had worked out. Jesus was 100% human just like we are. He experienced every temptation that we face and yet, and yet, he was different from us. He was without sin. Even so, our text this morning is really the only extensive account we have of the devil's direct attempts to seduce Jesus into sin and wreck his work of salvation for us. The devil thought that he could get Jesus. He could grab him. He could ruin him the same way he ruined our ancestors, Adam and Eve, in the Garden of Eden. Interestingly enough, he tries a very similar trick, doesn't he? The devil tempted Adam and Eve with food, that they would take food that would not be appropriate for them because God had commanded them not to. Jesus, of course, could have turned stone into bread and eaten that, but it was the devil who was telling him to do it and tempting him not to trust in God to take care of him and provide for his needs. There in the Garden of Eden, the devil was able to get Adam and Eve to sinfully take the food that God had forbidden, even though, think about this, they were happy and well-fed. They had all the food that they could eat, and yet the devil said, why don't, you, why don't you grab that fruit and take it? It would be good for you. They showed there in the Garden of Eden that they didn't trust God's love for them, and they certainly didn't fear God's threats and punishments, so they ate the fruit that God had commanded them not to. But Jesus, the second Adam here, he was famished from 40 days of eating nothing and still look how the results of his temptation are different. Such a difference between Jesus and Adam and Eve. Even with the cards stacked in their favor, they were part of God's perfect creation. They had a beautiful garden to live in. They had a perfect spouse. They had all the food that they could, could eat and yet they turned away from the Lord and foolishly followed the devil. They joined his team and turned into sin. But as much as we'd like to blame Adam and Eve and say, come on, why couldn't they have said no to just one temptation? Our lives would have been so different. You and I don't have any excuses either, do we? We know the rules. We know God's commands. Just as clearly as Adam and Eve knew them. Our excuses like Adam and Eve of the devil made me do it, which is almost literally what Eve said, those excuses don't fly for us either. You know what God says in his law about being faithful at your job, working diligently no matter what it is you're doing. You know how he commands you to love your spouse even more than you love yourself. He commands you to keep your thoughts pure and your words and actions filled with love for others and care for them. He commands us to honor and appreciate and treasure his word. And above all, he demands that we fear, love, and honor him above all things. And yet when God looks in your lives, what does he see? When he looks in my life, what does he see too? We've crashed and burned at every commandment. We've failed and broken them all. You haven't always been faithful. You've treated others shamefully. Time after time, 
We have shown that there are other things in our lives that are number one ahead of our love for the Lord. All have sinned. All have fallen short of the glory of God. All of us deserve God's wrath and punishment for our sins. All of us have failed and given in to the devil's temptations. But then there was our Savior. He was so different from us all. He, he passed the test with flying colors, perfect score, won the salvation for us. And the death that he died on the cross paid the debt that you owed for your sins so that God will not punish you for eternity because Jesus paid, the, paid your debt. But what he did here in the wilderness, defeating the devil's temptations, was just as necessary for you to inherit eternal life. It's like this. Let's say you want to buy a house and you need $25,000 for a down payment plus a, a loan for the bank uh, to get the house. You want to go to the, to the bank and, and get that loan. And as you do, you, they run a credit check on you and they find out that not only do you not have the $25,000 that you need for a down payment on the house, you're already $30,000 in debt. Now, if someone came along and paid the debt that you owed, you still wouldn't have the $25,000 that you need for a down payment on the house. You also need the positive, right? Not just the negative to be erased, but the, the positive. The law requires that we should be punished for our sins. But still, on top of that, it says in order to gain eternal life, you must obey the law perfectly. And that's why it's so important that Jesus not only paid the debt that you owed in your place, he also kept God's law perfectly in your place and gives you his credit, his straight A report card. And that's what Jesus is doing here. He fulfilled the law for you. He kept it perfectly. He gave you his perfect score. He not only paid your debt, but he also gave you the down payment on your eternal home. You and I follow the true champion. He won it all. He did it all for us. But that doesn't mean that we should expect that our lives of following this champion are going to be an easy cakewalk. It's just the opposite. If our leader, if the one we are following faced severe temptation from the devil, we can be certain that the devil's going to come after us too. The devil missed his opportunity to ruin Jesus and his work, but he's all too eager to reach out and grab those and pick off Jesus' followers. And that's why Peter warns us, be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. We sh dare never let our guard down. The devil's ready with his traps and his snares to drag you into deadly sin and hold you down under your guilt. That's why in the very next verse, the Apostle Peter gives us a very great task to follow in the footsteps of our champion. He says, watch out for your enemy, the devil. Resist him, standing firm in the faith. Fighting against the devil is a very tall task, one that we would never be able to do on our own. Paul, in his letter to the Ephesians, reminds us who it is that we are striving, that we are struggling against. It's not against other people who persecute us or put us down. Paul says, our fight is against the rulers, the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. These are the enemies that we're up against, and we need to recognize how dangerous they are. In order to fight against such Powerful enemies, we need a weapon that can stand up to them. We need a weapon from God himself. And such a weapon is going to have to have not physical power, but spiritual power to defend us. And it needs to be useful not only to defend ourselves from the devil's attacks, but also to slash back at him and keep him at bay, driving him away from us. As I mentioned Jesus' victory here in the wilderness isn't just instructional. It's also, 
It's not just comforting, it's also instructional. It teaches us. Jesus fought against these temptations in the same way that he wants us to do it. Deliberately, he had these words recorded for us. You know, we often think, about Jesus could have just flexed his almighty pinky and just blown the devil to smithereens. Why did he let him tempt him for 40 days? Why did he have them recorded for us in scripture? He could have just covered his ears and la 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 simply just said, I'm not listening to you. He could have gotten down on his knees and asked his heavenly father to open the ground up underneath the devil and swallow him whole. But he didn't. He endured the temptations. And he had them recorded for you in the Gospels so that you would know how it's done. He slashed at the devil with the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and every time made it blatantly clear, it is written, it is written. Even when the devil quotes our Psalm of the Day, Psalm 91, at Jesus, Jesus comes back at him with the Word of God and lets him know that he's not giving in to his attacks. In spite of the fact that Jesus has given us the victory and the weapons to fight against the devil's temptations, you and I are still sinners. We still fall into sin each and every day. Often the reason why is because we've loosened our grip on the sword of the Spirit that our God has given us. We allow ourselves to get lazy in learning how to apply God's word to the situations that we face in our lives. And the devil knows how to exploit our weaknesses and bring us down into sin. You think about a soldier, especially a soldier back in Jesus' day. Those soldiers who knew that their life and even the lives of their fellow comrades would depend on how well they were able to wield their weapons in battle. They didn't leave those weapons weapons lying on the ground. They kept them beside them. They slept with them under their pillow, kept them beside them as they, as they slept at night and worked and trained and learned how to use them day in and day out because they knew how much, how important it was that they be able to use those weapons and be prepared. When you and I recognize how frightening our enemy is, how powerful he is, and how ready to tear us down at any moment he is, we will hold on with, with all of our might to those weapons that God has given us and learn how to use them to fight the devil and his temptations. We will be prepared whenever he attacks. For, the time this, for all the times that we have failed to use God's word to parry the devil's temptations, we also need God's forgiveness. And the account of Jesus' temptation gives us comfort for every time that we fail. By faith, whenever we see Jesus landing a blow against Satan, we can rejoice because we know that God gives us credit for hitting the mark. God sums up our scorecard with just one word, righteousness. Because Jesus defeated the devil perfectly and died in our place and gives us his righteousness, you and I can trust that our scorecard is clean and perfect before God in heaven as well. Following in the footsteps of our champion, you and I are also victors over all the spiritual forces of evil and even the devil himself. We follow the footsteps of our champion toward the cross all throughout the Lenten season. And the 40 days of Lent remind us, bring to mind the 40 days that Jesus spent out in the wilderness. Not that we should follow his example by going out into the wilderness and starving ourselves for 40 days, but the Lord wants us to follow our Savior's example in striving hard to fight against temptation and the devil's attacks, especially this Lenten season, to rededicate ourselves once again and cling for all of our lives to the weapon that he has given us in his almighty word. Amen. Please stand. And the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus after you have suffered a little while will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power and glory forever and ever. 
Amen. Thank you for watching today's message from St. Matthew's Lutheran Church in Stoddard. Join us for worship at the following times, like us on Facebook, or visit our website for audio and video sermons or to find out more about our congregation. God bless your week in the Lord.